Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Dear loving Heavenly Father, may you have all the glory in this video. May your words be spoken, and may everybody who comes to watch it be blessed. I ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, let me be begin by presenting the gospel. Jesus loves you. And he wants you to spend eternity in heaven with him. But that cannot happen unless you are born again. So first, admit that you are a sinful creature. Then believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth. He lived a perfect and sinless life. He shed his blood on the cross to pay the penalty for your sins. Then he died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. All you have to do is believe that without adding in any of your own good works or trying to be good to please God for salvation. It has nothing to do with belonging to any church or practicing any religion. The moment you believe is like a personal encounter between you and God himself where you call on his name and you receive those truths into your heart personally. And the moment you do that, you are saved, you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit who will indwell you forever because salvation is eternal. You cannot lose your salvation. So I hope you've believed. And if so, please send me an email. My email address is in the description box, or you can leave a comment below. Well, I want to underscore some scriptures that demonstrate without a shadow of a doubt, that the, the gospel, that is salvation, is eternal. It, you cannot lose your salvation. It's permanent. Listen to this. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What part of everlasting means temporary? No. It's everlasting. Here's another one, John 10, 27 through 29. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Here's another one, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. And Romans eleven twenty nine. 29, listen to what it says about gifts of God. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That means God is not going to change his mind. Then going back to Ephesians 2, 9, not of works, you're saved not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The good works are already, already created for us. Listen to Isaiah 26, 12. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou also hast wrought all our works in us. So the good works are already there. All we have to do is just seek the Lord and ask him what they are and just follow. So I also want to point out Romans 9, 31 through 33. Listen to what Paul says about being saved by faith and being saved by works. He says, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore? Which means why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 
So the rock of offense and the stumbling stone is trying to be good and do good to please God, to become righteous. It's just by faith. It's just by believing that God accounts us righteous. Just like he said to Abraham, Abraham believed God and God, God counted it as righteousness for him. And so when we try to please God by being good, many people will stand at the judgment throne of Christ and they'll say things like this. I'm not a bad person, like I never murdered anybody, or I think I've been good, or I've been a good mother or a good father. I always tried my best. I was always honest and did what was right or tried to do what was right. I spent hours of time serving at the church. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a bad person. Oh, I think I've been good. So those things are what Jesus is going to hear. And unfortunately, they do not save you. And then on top of all those things where we're trying to do it ourselves, we have the false teaching of lordship salvation, which basically says you have to repent of all your sins and clean up your life before you can be saved. And you have to do good works and be good in order to maintain your salvation. And these are false, completely false. Because any time you try to be good, to please God uh, for your salvation or to maintain your salvation, you're saying that what Jesus Christ did on the cross is not sufficient. To save you, you have to contribute to it or you have to do your part. This is false teaching. And yet people who are against once saved, always saved, usually come out with something like once saved, always saved is alive from the pit of hell. That's not true. That is totally not true. Or another one, um, once saved, always saved gives everyone the license to sin or a green light to sin. Absolutely false. Absolutely false. Nobody in once saved, always saved teaches that or even believes it. So these are lies from the enemy. And listen to what Ezekiel 13.22 says about lies. And um, it's this is a, a reproof of false teaching. Because with lies, you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked ways by promising him life. What are the wicked ways that God is talking about? Trying to be good and do good works to please him for righteousness. And promising somebody's salvation through that uh, and not on faith alone or believing alone is a lie. And so this is really an important an important distinction for everybody to make because there are a lot of people out there on the internet today who are saying, oh, the bride has soiled her wedding dress and she has to clean up her, clean herself up to make herself ready for the coming bridegroom. And that is not true. Nobody can do that. Nobody can do it perfectly. And the fact of the matter is, every person who is born again will be taken in the rapture. That's for sure. Absolutely sure. And God does not go back and forth with his decision about that. That is to say, the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Absolutely. They are, they are without repentance. So let me just read. Let me just read a message or a comment that I, I had on one of my videos. This is edited a little bit. But this, this person said, Dear Virginia, I want to thank you a million times for the wonderful videos of encouragement you publish. However, the internet is these days is full of rapture warnings from all kinds of prophets and dreamers who discuss the rapture in such a ghastly tone that they make you believe that no matter how much you strive to walk with the Lord, you will never qualify for the rapture and will most probably be left behind to die like a cockroach. 
when Paul explains the rapture, he says, encourage one another with these words. I see almost zero encouragement from other Christians concerning our being raptured. This is a huge stumbling block for new believers who may think, since I'm not good enough for the rapture, why bother at all? He said, your videos are a gulp of fresh air, and I await them eagerly. Thank you. Well, I would just like to say unequivocally right now, I intend this video to be a blast from a gale force wind of fresh air for everybody. And so once again, whenever Satan attacks the gospel, he, he attacks either the nature and person of Jesus, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no doubt about that. So he messes with who Jesus really is. He tries to. He tries to redefine Jesus. The other thing he does is he messes with the gospel. And he always adds works. Always adds works to just the simple, full faith, 100% belief and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross and his shed blood to pay the penalty for our sins. Because Jesus said, it is finished. And we can't, we, we will not add to that. We'll just believe it. Now listen to a letter from a person who wrote to me who has been made sad. And this is what I don't want any of you to be sad by the things that are going around the internet. She said, I wish I had the joy of the Lord. I used to many, many years ago. I am not sure I will go in the rapture. I sit in churches that told me, if I willfully sin against the Lord, I will lose my salvation. I am not convinced that I'm born again. I do long to be part of the bride. Um, my fear for Jesus grew a little cold, but I do want to be with Jesus. Is it too late for me? Will the Lord take me back? Then she describes a disease that she has. And she says, am I under the Lord's wrath? I so want to be saved. I once went to a Pentecostal church months ago, and the pastor was looking my way and called me, I think, a wandering star and clouds without water. That's from Jude 12 and 13. That I was going for destruction. The Lord will destroy me. I was a child of perdition. I'm a little afraid. Is this my destiny? I don't want to go to a burning hell. I want to be with Jesus. Can God change my destiny or is it too late? Oh, this letter broke my heart. Here's how I responded to her. Jesus loves you. No, it is not too late. Watch the beginning of almost any of my videos where I present the gospel. Just believe the gospel. Call on Jesus to save you. He will. You are filled with fear from false teaching. Don't believe your feelings. Instead, believe God's promises. Your salvation is permanent. You cannot lose it. And then I told her I would read her letter in my next video, which I am right here, because it will help others. So be encouraged, everybody. Be encouraged. Jesus is not going to leave you behind. If you are born again, you're going in the rapture, which is any minute. It is so soon. The signs are all around us. It's just so close. So God bless you all. I just love you. I love you all so much, and I can't wait to see you. And if there's another video for me to put up, God will show me and I will post it. So, God bless you. Once again, I love you. Until then, bye for now.